Hi and welcome back to the next of our series of videos on galvanic cells and generating energy from redox reactions. Today we're going to be looking at the electrochemical series and how we can use that to predict which of the redox pairs is going to be the anode and which will be the cathode in our galvanic cells. So the electrochemical series is related to metal reactivity and we know that some metals react with solutions of other metals and ions and some don't. Okay, so we know that we will see single displacement reactions occur between two metals spontaneously, sometimes we'll see no reaction. We know that generally the more reactive metal will displace a less reactive metal out of solution and that that reactivity can vary greatly between metals. If we think about sodium, it's often stored under oil to keep it away from moisture in the air and oxygen, of which it will react with very readily. Magnesium and iron can corrode easily, forming magnesium oxides and iron oxide, what we know as rust. Whereas things like copper and gold are found as metals in nature, so they're not reactive, we tend to find them in the Earth's crust as the pure metal um, in nugget form and things like that. So we see a great variety of reactivity between metals and we can rank that reactivity. One, using our trends of the periodic table, so for group one we know that the reactivity increases as we go down a group, same for group two, and that metallic character decreases as we move towards the non-metals on the right hand side, but there's even more variation in it than that that we need to know in more detail when dealing with galvanic cells. So in order to map out the reactivity of these metals and their ions, the electrochemical series was created. It was done experimentally, okay, and it shows the relative reactivities of various metals and their corresponding cations. That is, half cells that contain a redox pair, the cation and the metal that we're looking at. It was created by comparing it to what we call a standard half cell, so something that was set up as the comparison point and marked as zero, and all other half cells were then connected to it and measured against that. So they were measured to whether they were positive or negative, i.e. were they oxidized or reduced, depending on which was the more reactive half cell. The standard half cell that is used is the standard hydrogen electrode. And this is where we start to see for a change the presence of a gas as one of our electrodes. And this is possible. The gas is pumped in and around a platinum electrode, which works as an inert electrode, um, providing the reactant around the conductive surface. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. So this hydrogen electrode was connected to a metal and a solution containing its ion, connected with all the things that we've come to know of a galvanic cell, a wire for the external circuit, a salt bridge, and a voltmeter. And then the voltmeter was measured to see whether or not the hydrogen electrode gave a was the anode or the cathode by measuring the positive or negative cell voltage. The standard hydrogen electrode was created under what we call SLC, and we talked about SLC when we talked about gases, where it was one atmosphere of pressure, 100 kPa, um, 25 degrees C, so 298 Kelvin, and one molar for all the solutions that are used in it. So these are the conditions that the electrochemical series was created under. Obviously, if we're outside of these conditions, then there could be some variation in the order that is observed. This is a copy of the electrochemical series from your textbook. You should become very familiar with it. You don't have to memorize it. Okay, you are also given it in your data booklet on page four. Okay, on table two. And this is an incredibly important table for you to be able to figure your way around. If we have a look here, the oxidizing agents are on the left hand side. This is not listed in your VCAR one in your data booklet, but everything on the left hand side of the arrows are oxidizing agents, i.e. they will be reduced in the forward reaction, and everything on the right hand side are reducing agents, i.e. they will be oxidized. 
So that makes sense if we look at what we have on the left hand side. F2 will gain electrons, okay, facilitating the oxidation. Fluorine being our most electronegative element, it's going to want to gain electrons. And if we look down the bottom, lithium plus, it has already lost its electron and it is not likely to want it back, okay. But lithium solid here, this is our most reactive metal. So if we annotate our electrochemical series, the strongest oxidant is on our top left hand side and the strongest reductant is on the bottom right hand side. And that's important when we come to figuring out what will react in a reaction. Okay, the other thing that we have on our electrochemical series is our E0 or electro, um, electrode potential. Okay, and we will talk more about this. But if you have a look, the higher the positive value that we see, the stronger the oxidant, i.e., the more likely the reduction reaction will occur. And we can see that down in our strongest reductant, it has a very negative value. So if we consider some of the reactions that we've looked at recently, we what we do when we work with our electrochemical series is we circle the species that are present in the reaction. So if we look at zinc here, okay, looking at the galvanic cell that we saw yesterday in our dem demo or the Daniel cell, we have zinc and then we have copper up here. Okay, so we, we've got the redox pair of Zn2 plus and zinc solid and copper 2 plus and copper solid. And we can see from this that if we look at the one on the upper left hand side to the one on the bottom right hand side, this is the spontaneous reaction that will occur. Okay, this downward gradient means that the reaction will be spontaneous and it will now react if we draw a line in the clockwise way. This reaction will occur, okay, so the forward reaction here and then this reaction here, which is our reverse reaction of the lower one. So when we think about this, this is exactly what we saw when we hooked up the Daniel cell in that the copper 2 plus ions were reduced out of solution forming copper solid at our cathode and the zinc solid was oxidized to zinc 2 plus at the anode. So our, the one above, so the top reaction, okay, going from left to right will be our cathode reaction because that is going to be the reduction reaction. Remembering the strongest oxidant will undergo reduction. And then this bottom reaction is going to be the anode reaction because this is our strongest reductant. It's going to be oxidized. And at the anode, the reverse reaction from the electrochemical series is going to happen, i.e. the zinc to Zn2+. The reaction will be spontaneous and suitable for a galvanic cell if we have a negative gradient going from left to right, i.e. starting at the left-hand side of the electrochemical series to the right-hand side of the electrochemical series. If we draw a line across it, we have a negative gradient going from one to the other. So now if we look at the combination of zinc and lead, again, we have a positive gradient. If we look here at the upper half equation, we have Pb2 plus and zinc solid. So we will see Pb2 plus going to Pb solid being our reduction reaction and zinc going to zinc 2 plus to be our oxidation reaction. So lead, if we were to connect these two in a galvanic cell, would be the cathode and zinc would be the anode, our negative electrode, our source of electrons. 
and just another example for us. Now if we have a look, if we place zinc and zinc 2 plus half cell with a magnesium and magnesium 2 plus half cell, we can see that zinc now is actually the stronger oxidant, which means that the zinc 2 plus in this scenario will be reduced and will form the cathode of a cell and the magnesium will oxidize forming the anode of the cell and this is because magnesium is a stronger reductant than zinc it's a more reactive metal so it will want to pass its electrons on to zinc forcing zinc to be reduced so again we will have going from left to right we will have the negative gradient so when we predict redox reactions using the electrochemical series, we need to check the series for all the things that we have present in the cell. Okay, so our metal and its cation. The strongest oxidant always reacts with the strongest reductant. So the one higher on the left hand uh, side will always react with the one lower on the right hand side. The reduction reaction will occur in the half cell with the higher E0 value, so the more positive value, which will be the one higher on the electrochemical series. The oxidant, i.e. the one higher on the left-hand side, will be reduced at the cathode, according to REDCAT, and the reductant will undergo the reverse reaction as it's printed on the electrochemical series from right to left because it will be oxidized and that oxidation is going to occur at the anode. So it's important to remember that electrons will always move from the site of oxidation, okay, the anode, to the site of reduction, the cathode. So our, electro, our electrons will move from the negative terminal in a galvanic cell to the positive terminal creating our current. The source of electrons will always be the negative electrode and that's important again as I said as we move on to different types of cells that we will look at in the coming weeks. Just having a look at how these sometimes turn up in our VCAR questions, we'll do a couple of quick questions and have a look. So in this question, this is from the 2015 exam, we've been told that we have three solutions and we've been asked which will react with zinc powder. So we have sodium chloride, copper chloride and magnesium chloride. For all of these, we have Cl minus present and then we have Na plus, we also have Cu2 plus and magnesium plus. So we need to go to the electrochemical series and we're going to be looking with zinc powder. So we need to look at what we have present in our cell and then compare and see which one will give us the negative gradient. So have a go and come back and check for the solution. So hopefully you had a look at your electrochemical series and you would notice that in terms of the species that we have present, we can list them from chlorine, then copper, zinc, magnesium, and sodium. When we look at these in terms of what's actually present in our cell, we're going to have the chloride ions present, we have copper ions present, we have zinc solid present, we have magnesium ions and sodium ions. So we don't have any magnesium solid, we don't have any sodium solid, and we don't have any chlorine gas. And that's important because now we can see that the only oxidant that is above zinc on the electrochemical series that we have present in our cell is copper 2 plus. So the copper 2 plus ion will react with zinc, which is in solution 2, but no other oxidant is higher on the electrochemical series. Cl- is actually a reductant, so it can't react with the zinc solid. The zinc won't take any more electrons. So only the copper 2 plus ion is an oxidant above zinc on the electrochemical series. So that is the only one that will react. Both magnesium and sodium are more reactive than zinc okay so it can't pass its electrons on to them they are not going to react with the zinc so they're below the zinc on the electrochemical series which means that our solution must be question uh, must be answer b only the copper can react ions can react with the zinc powder which is zinc solid in this reaction 
So what I want you to do now is have a look at these combinations and determine whether a reaction will occur. And if it does, you should write the half equations for the oxidation and reduction reactions, the overall ionic equation. So you've got three options here. Pause the video, have a go at doing them, remembering you're going to look up these on the electrochemical series, nickel metal and silver nitrate. This is going to be nickel solid. Remember the the states are important here, and silver nitrate you're going to have Ag+. Nitrate doesn't appear on our electrochemical series, it's a common spectator ion, so we can ignore that. Iodine crystals, this is going to be iodine solid, remembering iodine is a diatomic halogen. Sodium chloride, we're going to have Na+, and Cl- present. Chlorine gas is going to be Cl2. And then potassium iodide will, will have K plus and I minus. It's important to be able to identify the ions. Then go to your electrochemical series. Find out if you will have the oxidant above the reductant on the left hand side and work out which ones will give a reaction. Um, then come back and check your answer. Welcome back and hopefully you had a go at these and you discovered that A is the only one that will react. Nickel solid with silver plus. Silver is higher on the electrochemical series than nickel. So we find this reaction above the nickel reaction here. So we know that the silver ions will spontaneously react with the nickel solid, which means when we write the half equations for that, we get nickel solid going to nickel 2 plus as the oxidation reaction, and then silver going to silver solid as the reduction reaction. We would need two silvers to account for the two electrons from the nickel, so the full balanced equation would be nickel solid plus Ag2 Ag plus goes to nickel 2 plus plus 2 Ag solid. And that's it for this video on predicting reactions. In the next one, we'll look at the electrochemical series, assigning these to our anode and cathode, and calculating the voltage that we can expect to see from the cell.